Hey, what's up? This is Lame Genie, and you're listening to XBDM Radio!
Welcome to XVGM Radio, where the bits keep coming. I'm Mike. And I'm Justin. And you are listening to episode 21, Lame Genie. Lame Genie. This genie is anything but lame. Today we are gathered to discuss a awesome, totally awesome and tubular band called Lame Genie. They are a video game music cover band, and they will tell you a little bit more about themselves. Guys, thanks so much for being on the show with us. Hey, thank you guys. It's an honor. And a pleasure. Oh, nice. (laughs) Sweet. Right back at you. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. So the members of Lame Genie are Mike Costigan. Is that right? Oh, that's right. Okay. Kyle Sawaya. Oh, dude, you're the first person I've ever talked to that got my last name correct. Really? Okay, I I'm, I, I feel you on that one. I've, I've dealt with that my whole life. Now watch them screw up this next one. <laughs> yeah, and then Jeff McGowan. That's me! Yes! <laughs> nice! Three for three! I should get it's a prize. actually McGowan, but nice try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that too. I was like, yeah. watch it be McGowan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it really McGowan? <laughs> Are you are you messing with me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would just have to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't do that to my self esteem, man. All right. Wait, you, thought you still have self esteem? Uh, yeah, I know, right? After doing this show. <laughs> <laughs> self esteem, old school, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys have been a band for about how long now? Oh, geez. Uh, about five, five and a half years. Yeah, uh, long. Feels like forever. <laughs> about five, coming up on six. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. So, uh, tell me a little bit about how you guys got started. Go ahead, Jeff. Well, a long time ago in a land far, far away, <laughs> I uh, just decided I wanted to record a cover of Alley Cat Blues from Turtles in Time. Ooh, nice. My friend Mike here hit me up and was like, hey, you want to make a band of this? <laughs> and I was like, eh. It kind of seems like a waste of time. And then like a day later, I was like, actually, yeah, let's do it. Nice. Back in the day, I used to be extremely, extremely persistent. Okay. You still are, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, he harassed me for a very long time. <laughs> really? But, um, yeah, and then originally we were just going to do a YouTube series of the covers, and then one day we just decided we should do an album, and since then we've just been recording constantly. Yeah, I think, I think in the first, like, maybe year and a half, we put out, like, how many albums? It was like five albums or something like that. Like we wow. kind of just went nuts on that first like two years and just put out albums after albums after albums. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's what's insane. really album? And all but, really high yeah, consistent cool. quality. I mean, we'll we'll talk a little bit about throughout the episode as far as like the albums and some of the stuff that you guys got. That just you guys seem like my kind of people. You guys seem like real like goofballs. <laughs> yeah, uh, dude, completely. Down yeah. All right. Say <laughs> like down to earth, got. laid back. Yeah. Goofballs. Like long walks on the beach and <laughs> hair flowing. The the yeah. I almost said the hair flowing through their wind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, what is, yeah, I don't even know what that refers to, right? <laughs> the flowing through my winds. That could mean anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? My, my, my like very familiar with winds. Pain reference. <laughs> <laughs> Rosebud. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, why don't we uh, just talk a little bit about the track that we came in on. That was the Mega Man 3 Medley. And that was off of their album Retro Pander, which I have so many questions about the name of that album. First off... <laughs> Why? <laughs> why retro? Um, why panda? Why no, pander? Not panda. Pander. Do you it's know what pandering pander- is? Oh, like pandering. Oh, okay, okay. Like retro panda. Yeah. But, on the cover, the yeah. but on the cover, there's a panda bear. Oh. See, that yeah. you didn't know. No, I didn't. Yeah, I drew, I drew that panda. Oh, did you? <laughs> nice. Yeah, so... Like, we, just, we just had it, so then we just figured no, out... No, no, no. No, what, it, what happened was, I think I think we were playing or something. It was something stupid. Mm. And we were playing a show or something, and we're like, yeah, all we do, all we do as a band is pander to, like, <laughs> retro fans. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I believe that's where the name came from. We're like, oh, all right, that's a sweet album name. Okay. <laughs> Okay. okay. Yeah. So so I kind of took the panda and said it like uh like a Rhode Islander or something. Oh. That's where I drew the panda. That's panda fun. Code. You know, retro panda. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and we actually have we we made Retro Panda into an April Fools album called uh, Royal Panda. Yes, yes. We're we're going to save that. We're going to save that discussion because okay. I, I have a story about that. Okay. Everyone wants to listen to Royal Panda. Oh my god. It's so good. I, I cannot wait to talk about Royal Panda. <laughs> classic. Yeah, absolutely. So, what a great in- way to introduce oh the Oh my god. Not only the listeners to the band, but also just a kick-ass way to bring in the track. Yeah, yeah, that'd you be know. the entire show. Yeah, the entire show. So, I absolutely love 
the way that this medley flows. I mean, it's, and, and all of their medleys that they do on all their albums flow really well together. They, they just really like gel, hmm. like so perfectly. And so like when you're listening to a medley, it's over before you know it. And then you're just like, oh man, that was so good. Like I forgot that it was a medley, <laughs> you know, but I love the dual octaves that you guys do where like the harmonizing of the two guitars, like twin guitars. Oh, yeah. But you guys only have one guitarist, right? Yeah. So how do. do you how do you do that live? I, that that was something I was thinking about today. I was like, do you have like something that uh, like a pedal that when you hit it, it amplifies like well, uh, an octave? So our whole live set is controlled. Um, basically, we're slaves to a computer. Okay. So our whole entire live set is ran from a computer that also runs our video. Okay. And mm. with that video, we have a ton of tracks that play with us, so we can get away with having like three members uh, and not have to rely on anybody else. Kind of like Anna the the space with mm. with pre-recorded stuff. It, it's kind of like Anna Monaguchi, how they're kind of same thing. They're kind of slaves to uh, the fact that the NES is playing. It's playing at a certain <laughs> speed and tempo and everything, and they can't really like you know manipulate it at all. They have to like exactly, kind of yep. stick with yep. the program. Yeah, we're basically the uh, Milli Vanilli of video game cover <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. I, I didn't like Van- Millie Vanilli that much. We need, we uh, need I also to, don't think he I could did. do. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go to their. Sweet. We need to go to one, one of their live shows then, so that way we can hear like, "Girl, you know it's girl, you yeah, know right? it's girl, you, you put know." Put that in it. as just a joke at this point, I think. Yeah, oh, yeah. Man. Oh my God. <laughs> that would actually work really well with a Royal Pander like like two point oh. <laughs> Oh, that would be sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. well, we, we, when we play live, too, we have a character that we created. His name is BT Jones. So we should just have BT Jones do the girl you know apart. That would be sweet. Oh, there yeah. you go. There you go. Nice. Because so, we don't, uh, we don't, yeah. I mean, we're, we, none of us have ever been front men in bands before, like okay. past bands. Yeah. So when we started this project, we're kind of like, none of us want to talk. So what <laughs> do we do about this? So we created a character that talks for us in between songs. That's <laughs> fantastic. That's really yeah. cool. Uh, and he's is he like a bear? Cause I get no, he's uh he's just that we searched Google for just like a nerd and we picked the first guy that came up and we animated his face. So that's yeah, awesome. That guy, or if he's listening to this podcast, thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, have, we have run into him once. Oh my god, that's just amazing. The exact same yeah, we ran line. into a clone. But that's wow. Yeah. Yeah, it was a guy watching us, and he definitely did not enjoy us. And I don't know if it's because we were using his face. Oh, no. It wasn't actually him. There's no way. But... No. <laughs> That's funny. So, Mega Man 3, one of my favorite games of mm. all time. Actually, it probably is my favorite game of all time. So. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Definitely. Same. Yes. I, I am high-fiving you through the microphone, <laughs> through the power of the internet. <laughs> it is definitely Far superior to Mega Man, Mega Man 2. Yes, yes. yes. thank you. From a music standpoint. That's so. what's yes. up. Ooh. That's what's up. Come at me, bro. Yeah, right? Come <laughs> at us. So uh, we're going to move into our first track. Now, the way that we're going to do this is it's going to be kind of like a comparison episode. Uh, if you guys, if anyone has heard our Versus episodes before, like, for example, our C64 episode where we compared C- Commodore 64 music with, like, Arcade, Genesis, etc., this is going to be very similar. So we're going to play the original track, uh, and then we're going to play Lame Genie's version of that track. So we've got five amazing tracks on this episode so the track that we're going to first play for you today is from mario kart 64 this came out on the n64 in 1996 the track is calamari desert we're going to play again the original version by kenta nagata and then we're going to come back and introduce the lame genie version
was Mario Kart 64 on the N64, which came out in 1996. That was Calamari Desert, and this is Lame Genie's version off of Play Games, Eat Tacos. Kart 64 that was Lame Genie's version off of their album Play Games Eat Tacos. The track was Calamari Desert and that came out in the N64 in 1996 and the track was originally composed by Kenta Nagata. I love the energy that the Lame Genie version brings. It's so much quicker and faster paced and it just it brings a new life to a track that is otherwise like a very kind of westernized, like yeah, you know it's that got, it's got that like whistle sound, yeah, that, woo, woo, woo. yeah, right, right, right. I I really like how they brought in the the the, the actual Mario sound, yeah, the like let's they, go yeah, type it's starting of, yeah. out with, with let's go, and at uh, at one point in there, I am fairly sure I heard the uh, the Mario burning his butt on uh, on lava sound. Oh, the, oh, 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 oh. no, not not not, not oh, the dying, <laughs> no, the like. Burning his oh butt. oh like ah, whoa, whoa, whoa. yeah that yeah one. yeah yeah gotcha. <laughs> Let us get inside your mindsets. What were you thinking when you picked this track? Were you like, oh, we want to do something for Mario Kart, so let's pick like a track that nobody's really covered? Because I've never heard a cover song for this. Yeah, this is an old one, right? This is one of your originals, Jeff, right? So. Yeah, actually, like going back to that time before the band was started, I decided I was going to do a Mario Kart track every week. Like, I would record a different one. Okay. By the time I flew through a bunch of them, Calamari Desert was my favorite, so we redid it as the band. Yeah. The the original, for, for a, uh, a heavier band like us, and like what Jeff was doing mm. before the band, was, it's just like, that slow of a song is just too slow. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So we're just like, what, what, what do you do to this thing? And it's just like, oh, let's speed it up. Easy, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I think it's the right choice to make I'm, for a track like, like this. It's like mm. in mm-hmm. a way. Mario Kart 64, did you guys, like, play this a lot, like, back in the day, like we did? Because I know I had an N64, and I played this. I played this with my little brother. I played this with friends. Like, friends would come over, and we'd play it. I played this, like, I used to also be in a band, and, like, we would we would practice, and then, like, back in high school, and then we would get bored of practicing, so then we would just end up playing, like, GoldenEye and Mario Kart. That sounds nice. like every band I've ever been in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, let's practice for 20 minutes and let's play Mario for three hours. Yeah. And it's always the same thing. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we used to call this level Nowhere to Hide. <laughs> oh, is that the gold no. no, no, in this one, in Calamari Disney, uh, you, you can't escape any of the shells. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's no. flat yeah. for the most part. Yeah. Mike, you actually won a Mario Kart tournament down at uh, like that, um, what do you call it? What's that store? Uh, Toy Vault? Toy Vault, yeah. Ooh, Mark, Mark. I'm ah, familiar with Toy Vault. Wait, wait, is that the one in... No, it started in Rhode Island. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, we, we have a toy vault, I think one in Connecticut. They, they expanded out in Connecticut a few years ago. Yeah. Kenta Nagata has worked on quite a bit, starting with Mario Kart 64 in 96, followed it up with Pokemon Stadium in 98, 1080 Snowboarding in the same year. Oh, I love 1080. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. a great game. Then followed it up with Dobotsu Nomuri in 2001. Uh, we're going to jump ahead a little bit. Uh, actually worked on Legend of Zelda Wind Waker in 2002. Animal Crossing. <laughs> Animal Crossing, they did the field uh, background music. They did the conversion of Mario 64 DS. Uh, so they did the Mario Kart 64 mm. conversion mm-hmm. onto the DS. Uh, Big Brain right. Academy, Legend of Z- Zelda, yeah. Legend of Zelda: Phantom Hourglass in 2007. Mostly as either sound, sound direction lately with like Mario Kart 8 and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. They did the com- composition on Steel Diver Sub Wars, which was their latest game, as well as New Super Mario Brothers Wii and New Super Mario Brothers 2. So they've kind of done mostly like really big time Mario games or. Mario Kart, you know, he's pretty much yeah. like always stayed on the Mario Kart series for the most part. Did Double Dash in 2003, so the DS one was done in 2011, which was Mario Kart 7. Yeah. So let's move on to our next track, which is from what game, Justin? All right, so next we're first going to hear the original track from Undertale. The track is called Asgore. The game Undertale came out on the PC, Vita, PS4, Mac, Linux, and the Switch multiple times between the years of 2015 and 2018 and the track was originally composed by toby fox with guitars by stephanie mcintyre that's right That was Asgore from Undertale, composed by Toby Fox with guitars by Stephanie McIntyre. And now we are going to listen to Asgore again, as done by Lame Genie. This was on their Retro Pander album.
Welcome back. That was Asgore from Undertale, as performed by our guest Lame Genie, and that was off of their Retro Pander album. Holy moly. Holy moly. <laughs> Holy smokes. I love, again, the energy. I, I, I've i never played Undertale. I've never heard the soundtrack. This is the very oh. first song I've ever heard off of the soundtrack. Wow. Oh, the soundtrack's awesome. Yeah, it, it's, it is. Uh, <laughs> you know, I a uh, mutual friend of Justin and I, uh, this guy Eric, who is a very specific gamer. He only yes. plays very specific games. And even he, who doesn't like RPGs, doesn't really like shooters, mm. any of that, was like, you have to play Undertale. And that was right around the time when this game was super hyped. Yeah. And, like, anytime somebody gets, like, super hyped about something that I am not into and there's, like, a huge fan base, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to jump on board initially. I don't know if it's just me being kind of antisocial. But I'm just kind no, of like... that's the same way. Yeah. Yeah, I just look bad. Yeah. And I leave. <laughs> <laughs> so it's... It, Kind of like me going. I, I'm I'm gonna hold off until everyone's done hyping this game. Yeah. Uh, I kind of did that with Celeste. Like I haven't played oh. Celeste yet. I'm uh, the Messenger. Same thing. Like all, all these games, these titles that everyone gets super super hyped about. I'm like, I want to play this, but I'm gonna hold off. So this was a real treat to listen to. Uh, the song was phenomenal. Really good stuff. And I like the original how it kind of bounced back and forth between that piano and then you got that more like 8-bit sound which was really cool yeah yeah that's that whole soundtrack is really really uh it blends like the two styles super super well yeah so toby fox was the creator of this game right yeah uh yeah. creator of the game and it did the uh the, the music composition, the music with, composition. Uh, with, with a little bit of help from from stephanie mcintyre right um she did the guitars that it's the only uh the only video game credit that she has right uh, at the moment is mm -hmm. uh, is undertale okay toby fox however also did did music in Hive Swap Act One, which came out in 2017, and a game called Wander Song in 2018. He's credited as Undertale 2015, mm -hmm. so I have a feeling that they may have borrowed borrowed a song or oh. may have lent them a song. Right, right. And what about? Isn't there another game that he was working on called like Yeah Delta Rune? Rune. Yeah, Delta which, Rune. Yeah, which yeah. is Undertale with the uh, the letters mixed up. Ah, okay. What do they call that? I didn't realize I didn't that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, no, it was. So I didn't realize it at first. Uh, Eric told me. Uh, he oh. was like, oh, hey, check out Del Delta Rune. I was like, oh, cool. Yeah, and, and I was talking about how it looked a lot like Undertale, which makes sense because I knew it was by Toby sure. Fox. And he goes, yeah, uh, Delta Rune is, a, is an anagram of, uh, of, anagram, of, yeah, of Undertale. It. And I was like, yeah. oh, uh, son that's of a, a gun. Tip. That's a real hot tip right there. Yeah, I feel like such a poser. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't a real fan if you don't know that. Uh, <laughs> dang. <laughs> <laughs> so why Undertale? Why choose this game? Just because you love the soundtrack in the game? Or was there a specific reason why you chose this song out of all the songs you could have picked before i even heard undertale I w i'm like really into smash brothers i've always been nice. uh like com competitive wise okay and uh i was watching a, a combo video of a, of a toon link player hmm. and he had the song in the in the combo video and i was like what the heck song is this i've never even heard of anything <laughs> like this before and i researched it and then that's how i found undertale kind of when it before it became like the mass success that it is now and uh huh. from there i played the game and listened to the soundtrack and i was like oh man there's so many good songs on this and i was looking through youtube to see which ones people already did mm. and uh at that point it was just so flooded with the same oh. covers of like those same most popular songs yeah, and this yeah. one stuck out to me as like my favorite and i was like oh might as well do this one right yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty cool. And it's nice to stand out from the crowd, too, because you exactly, pick the track yeah. that nobody else really has been covering. So that's good. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, the thing about YouTube and, and, and covers like this, it's like when a new game comes out, it's like such a rat race at this point. Oh, yeah. For everyone to like just see how fast they can put the cover out of like the latest game that's coming out. And yeah. For a while, like our mentality was like, oh, maybe we should try and get on that, that train of mm -hmm. like busting covers out as quickly as possible but at that point it's like why even you're not doing it for fun you're just doing it for other people you know yeah yeah, yeah. no that's very true yeah. and and you know i would imagine especially with a band environment you've got multiple people multiple personalities and multiple ideas kind of flowing through your head so you're probably all wondering like okay 
why are we really doing this? Are we doing it to have fun or are we doing it to get popular? And I, I think most of the successful bands that do it for fun, they get something more out of it than people who are doing it just to become famous or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Because if you if you have to keep up with every game that comes out and do songs from every soundtrack that comes out, you're going to get burnt out so fast. Oh, that's yeah, it's exhausting. Yeah, and then it becomes yeah, more and, like and, work. And you're not even going to end up doing songs that you like, you know? Exactly. And it's like, why? It's, yep. it would just be a waste of time. So. Yeah, <laughs> and, then, and then it becomes more like work and less like fun, so. So, yeah. Sure. yeah, and then why? Why bother? Right, exactly, um, exactly. So, wanted to ask. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I should know this, but uh, for our listeners at home, what a so what role do, does each of you have? Like, what do, what do you guys like? Wh- who plays what? Who does who does what? Um, go ahead. Jeff plays guitar. Uh, Mike plays bass. I play drums. Kyle plays drums. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, we we track everything in in my home studio, and then I mix everything, and that's it. That's how we do it. Every song that we write and cover, we write it like completely on the spot. We usually practice on a Wednesday or whatever. We'll get together once a week. Mm-hmm. And before practice, we'll be like, what song are we doing? And then someone will be like, oh, I just heard this song. This song's really cool. So then we'll come without any of us hearing it and we'll record it that night. <laughs> That's really <laughs> so, cool. Damn. Wow. Wow. That's really impressive. Yeah. Yeah. So are you guys musically trained? Like, just are you, are you uh, <laughs> like professionally musically or professionally trained? Or did you just kind of like learn it as you, as you went? I would- we're just kind of dudes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just nice. dudes. I took guitar lessons, and that guy was a huge ripoff. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess you could call that classically trained, but not really. <laughs> you don't need music or anything? Yeah, I, I, I mean, me, Kyle, the drummer, played guitar until I was, like, 22, so... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's I didn't cool. Pick up a drumstick until like really late in my career. Oh I wow! Guess, so. yeah. And did you play rhythm or did you mostly play lead or kind of a? I bit? played. Uh, yeah, I played rhythm and lead. I, okay. I was much more inclined to lead. Okay. And uh, you have any tracks that you could share? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been. Uh, <laughs> that, that must have been pretty crazy going from uh, rhythm. Uh, and lead and kind of bouncing back and forth to just going to rhythm on drums because typically the drummer and the bassist kind of follow the same, you know, mm. you know, beat, so to sure. speak. Sure, yeah, but in uh, in the way that we record, uh, one of the things that we like to do to get like as big of a sound that we have is we kind of make a lot of the instruments play together as much as possible. Yeah. So like, there might be a bass line in the cover, but if it suits the song better to have the bass line switch to a rhythm part for you know what i mean just mm-hmm. to kind of hold things down in a different yeah. way because yeah. a lot of this stuff wasn't written for real like uh like guitar instruments so it what sounds gr- right on a synth will not sound great on a guitar sometimes you right. know? That's, that's fair that's yeah. true and who writes yeah, so you have to kind of take liberties with it a little bit and mm-hmm. i think that's why uh we're able to get such a big sound is just taking a rock approach to, to yeah. deconstructing songs. You have like a very like big booming sound, almost as if, you know, this is like a really high quality, like top of the line production studio. So whatever you guys are doing, you're nailing it, definitely. Wait. Millie Vanilli, baby. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and what I picture... Yeah, I've been, I mean, I've been recording for, I don't know, since I was, yeah, like 20. Okay. And recently, we I just, I do, I write jingles for commercials and we just recently, um, I own a, a side business where we write and compose music for like uh, we just did a cartoon that was premiered on Facebook. It was called Liver Spots and Astronauts. Oh, nice! Um, we scored that whole series, and um, so I mean, I've been recording is just kind of something that comes uh, over time, and yeah, and it just we kind of I don't know fell into it, I guess. Yeah, that's really cool. These guys are lying. I know what really happened. They went to Taco Bell, and they <laughs> they all like bought like a Doritos Locos. Cool, like either Cool Ranch, Nacho Cheese, and the what's the other one? Volcano. The volcano. Fire. 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 Yeah. yeah. All true. And then and then they took a bite, and then each one they put the tacos together, and then they transformed into Lame Genie. It was like a He-Man Masters of the Universe yeah, kind of thing. When someone asks us to describe our sound, I usually say it's like a blender with Taco Bell and Mountain Dew. So. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> Yes. It's just like the coolest 90s skateboarder you'll ever see in your life, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, it's oh. wicked extreme. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, no, so then it's it's not uh, t- uh, Taco Bell and Mountain, it's Taco Bell and Surge. Yes. <laughs> Baja Blast, man, what do you mean? Yeah. It's Baja, listen. Baja, if, no, uh, Baja Blast is my favorite, but I'm just saying, if you're going for 90s extreme, it's all that's about the true. Surge. If you oh, that's, go, yeah, that's a good, if you go to Taco Bell and you don't get Mountain Dew Baja Blast, why are you at Taco Bell? Why are you at Taco Bell? You're fooling Seriously, yourself. I agree. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I could talk about Taco Bell all night, so we may as well move on to our next track. 
Uh, I thought this was a Taco Bell podcast, no? Uh, we, we are trying to get sponsored by Taco Bell. We are. And actually, that's really... <laughs> if you guys got it before us, let us know. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so... Let's move into our next track, which is from a classic game on the Super NES. This came out in 1993. It's Mega Man X, and this track is Chill Penguin. And this is by Setsuo Yamamoto, Makoto Tomozawa, Yuki Iwai, Yugo Takahara, and Toshihiko Horiyama. And we're going to play, again, this version from the original game, and then we'll jump back into Lame Genie's version. Mega Man X, which came out in the Super NES in 1993. The track was Chill Penguin. And now we're going to listen to the Lame Genie version, which came out on their album, The Pretension Index Volume 2, Moist. Welcome back to XVGM Radio. That was Mega Man X, and that came out in the Super NES in 1993. The track was Chill Penguin's theme, and the version we just heard just now was off of the Pretension Index Volume 2, Moist. Moist. Yeah. <laughs> they all said that together like yeah, it was planned. Dude. Yes. <laughs> and, and that track was originally by Setsuo Yamamoto, Makoto mm. Tomozawa, Yuki Iwai, Yuko Takahara, and Toshihiko Horiyama. Yeah, and I, I need just a moment to clean I'll myself up because that track, that version just punched me in the face. Did it? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Like the, that, the, huh? the way that came in was just 
oh yeah yeah like i feel like i got into a fight it was great <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you got into a fight with like a penguin who is very chilly yes a, yeah. a very very cold a cold fight yeah. he's not an aggressive penguin he's kind of chill so yeah, <laughs> yeah. well i mean how could you blame him he's been sipping on some baja blast freezy that's what i mean yeah yeah <laughs> You ever had a frozen Baja Blast? I have, yeah. You know, I have not. It's, it's for all the things that I that I love. It's I, good. I need to try that. It's good. It's good. It's better in, during the summer, though. Yeah, not yeah. so much now. Well, so you see, this past summer they had the watermelon slushy, right? And I got that once, and I was sort of hooked because mm-hmm. it had all these little candy pieces in it, right? And right. then, of course, I went into diabetic shock. So. Right, of course, <laughs> yeah. Which is exactly what Chill Penguin's plan was all along. Uh, that's, that's his super. That's his power, dude. Yeah. That doesn't sound very chill. He just gives people <laughs> no, it is. It's super <laughs> chill. Because he's yeah. just like, yo, man, let's go to Taco Bell. Let's hear. Hey, man, you're going to die a slow death. Let, let me give you diabetes. <laughs> you may have won the battle, but I'm going to win the war. <laughs> oh, no. You like your toes, Mega Man? <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of my favorite games of all time, of course. Mega Man X? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, I do like the sequel better. I will say Which that. Which one? X2? X2. Yeah. Oh, okay. I do actually like X2 better. I think it's a more rounded game. This one just mm-hmm. is so classic, you know? Like, yeah. this is the Mega Man 2. This is like the blueprints of the franchise. And then Mega sure. Man X2, they really just oh, like yeah, kicked yeah. it up a notch, you know? Yeah, no, I would agree. And I don't know if I've played this one more or X4 more. Okay. Um, I played through X1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I think I stopped there. Yeah. I watched my friends play uh, 7 and 8, <sighs> so uh, and I was just like, no, thank you. Yeah, no. But I actually started with 4. I didn't play Did X1. Did you really? Yeah, I didn't play the X games when they came out in the SNES because... I, I don't I don't remember why. Uh, wow. I was I was a dumb kid, I guess. I guess so. How um, dare you? <laughs> yeah, I didn't play them until uh, I got sick, and then I got the collection for GameCube, and then I played oh, wow. through all of them. That nice. was the first, my first experience with them. Oh like, wow! Uh, yeah, years and years and years ago. Yeah, Chill Penguin. It's uh, not a track that you would normally hear covers of, but I think that you guys really nailed this one as far as not only keeping the tempo realistic and not speeding it up like a lot of other bands do there's one other band that covers specifically Mega Man X songs oh yeah yeah they're called the X Hunters mm-hmm. Phen- oh yeah they're, they're we're phenomenal friends yeah we know really? yeah, yeah. They're, they're really nice guys I've hung out with them before and they are just phenomenal as well and one thing I really like that they did was they did kind of what Lame Genie did where they slowed things down because mm-hmm. when they first initially came out they, they were like speeding through the tracks going crazy fast and everything but when they slowed stuff down and kind of like brought it to a more realistic approach on a heavy metal aspect it sounds a lot cleaner and a yeah, lot yeah. smoother and lame gene mm. definitely does the same thing with chill penguin here i also like that the synths aren't overpowering here they kind of <laughs> stay on the back burner which i like because i always want the guitar front and center sure yeah so uh this is off of the pretension index volume two moist you've got to explain this i know you've got four volumes of the pretension index how did this come about <laughs> well we were kind of thinking it's kind of a parody of that band thrice because okay. they have a series of albums called the alchemy index and mm. they're named after elements I elements think? Yeah, okay yeah. so we figured it'd be funny to uh you know just parody that and tweet at them <laughs> that's and really funny. respond and mm. they never did oh uh, so, yeah that's... that's why the first one is called shots fired we're just constantly tweeting at people and getting shut down. That's all we do. So. Yes, yeah. hilarious. Basically, our band exists to bother people. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's hilarious. So, what's the third so one and the fourth to one? Do themes. Yeah, because like, I mean, every game has a, a wind level, a fire level, right? So, right. I mean, it only made sense and underwater and, level, a water level, yeah. <laughs> and the, and the best way to, I mean, separate them into albums is just like a kind of a no brainer. So, yeah. And I love the third one, Welcome to Earth. I was just going to say, I know you would love that. <laughs> E-R-F, Earth. Yeah, that's the Earth album. Th- that is the only way to say that, Welcome to Earth. Earth. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to Earth. Yes. Independence Day, man. Exactly. Classic. Classic. And the fourth album is The Air Up There. Yeah. You have classic great. Kevin Bacon. <laughs> and all the albums, just so you guys know, that all the albums are available on their band camp. We'll link it at the end of the episode. We'll... we'll Link it in the show notes and everything. We'll talk a little bit about it. But each album is following these elements. So you've got the air up there. That's all like air-based tracks. Welcome mm-hmm. to Earth. That's all like Earth-based tracks. And then Moist is water and Shots Fired Fire is fire. fire right, yeah. right, right, right. So very clever. Very funny. Good stuff. <laughs> 
So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you can tell, we take ourselves super, super seriously. So. Yeah, no. I mean, you have to in this day and age. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you look at, speaking of the X-Hunters, if you look at their stuff, they've got, like, all this very serious toned albums with, like, this very dark art and everything. <laughs> and, you know, you look at Lame Genie's stuff, and they've, <laughs> they've got, like, speed run albums. They've got, uh, <laughs> one of their albums is called Copyright Claim. Uh, it's awesome. Yeah, you've got Throwback Nerds Day, Speed Runs to Cruise Control. Like, oh, the Speed Runs album is my favorite, man. Those are great. Those are- yeah, so the Speed Run albums, just to talk briefly about that, they did two albums of Speed Runs where they basically picked really, Yeah, we're really working sh- on three right now. Are oh, you are? Nice, awesome, nice. awesome. So you pick. Yeah, the third one is going to be called Three Fast, Three Furious. That's yes. amazing. That's so great. That's perfect. So these albums, <laughs> these Speed Runs, these are basically just really short tracks and like nobody does that like nobody <laughs> is you've hit a market that nobody is covering like for example exactly. the, the burger time uh, main menu theme nice you know what i mean uh well you know what's funny about that we um we got in contact with someone um you know nathan barnett who's yeah. a he's a youtuber he does keith apicary yeah he's yeah. one of his oh, big yeah. characters yeah we got in contact with him a while ago and he wanted to use a couple of our tracks in his videos and the most of the tracks he ended up using was from speedruns. Oh, that's funny. That's awesome. <laughs> because they just fit into a short video so well like because they're only five seconds. Se- yeah, it's like yeah. a sound effect, yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you've got the Earthworm Jim rodeo thing when you beat Psycho. Oh, yeah. So they've got that <laughs> and they've got the little sound effect at the end with the hey, you know. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's just so good. Nothing but love for Layton Genie on this this podcast so Mega Man X composers Setsuo Yamamoto we've talked about him before he has stuck with Capcom through and through starting with music design on Street Fighter 2 the championship edition which was the Genesis port also did Mighty Final Fight sound composition Mega Man the power battle in 95 Final Fight 2 in 93 jumping ahead Strider 2 in 99 Dead Rising Chop Till You Drop, which was the Wii port of Dead Rising that came out in 2009. He was the sound manager on that. He's got a ton of other credits as well, but he ended as sound studio coordinator for Resident Evil 2 Remake in this year of 2019. Oh, that game was so good. I have not played it yet. I am oh my so God, stoked. It was so good. Oh, I loved the original Resident Evil 2, so I'm stoked to play the remake. All right, next up we have Makoto Tomozawa. Started out uncredited on Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge in 1991. Dino Crisis 2 in 2000. Did the sound composition on that. Did the music on Mega Man Legends 2 also in 2000. Axria Retro World in 2012 did the music on and ended as a sound director most recently in 2018 on Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet. Yes. Many more tracks were done by them, but we're just trying to save time. Yuki Iwai, we've talked about many times on this podcast, <laughs> specifically on our Disney Capcom episode and our Beat 'em Ups episode. Gargoyles Quest 2 in 1992 was their first game they did sound composition on. They worked on Street Fighter 2 Turbo in 93, jumping ahead X Men vs. Street Fighter in 97, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter in 99. They did arrangement and composition. Their final game was R Type Command in 2007, and of course they also worked on which is not listed here but i know they worked on cadillacs and dinosaurs oh yes on the arcade yes yep. next up we have yuko takehara started out doing sound composition in mighty final fight in 1993 did a number of Mega Man games all throughout the years uh, Mega Man 6 came out in 1993 as well Mega Man 2 the power fighters in 1996 did the music on that jojo's bizarre adventure in 1998 yeah we talked about that on that yeah, yeah. Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, Four Swords. In 2002, they did some music on that. And then most recently, Mega Man 10 in 2010, they were one of the many music composers in that. Yeah. And then last composer, Toshihiko Horiyama, worked on Mega Man X as their first game in 93. Moved on to uncredited roles in Demon's Crest in 1994 as the music composer. Later on, did Mega Man 7 and Mega Man X4, one of your favorites. Mm -hmm. And then, jumping ahead, worked on the first two Onimu. Musha Games, where they did sound design and music composition. Their final game is Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice in 2016, which was Ooh. the... They did the music on that. So, that is all for Mega Man X. We're moving on to the other side of the fence, from moving from Capcom to Konami. What do you got for us? Alright, so, we are first going to hear from uh, Silent Hill 2, 
which came out in the PS2 in 2001. The track is the theme of Laura and was originally composed by Akira Yamaoka. That was the theme of Laura from Silent Hill 2 on the PS2 in 2001 by Akira Yamaoka. And now we are going to hear Lame Genie's take on this track. And this was from their Play Games Eat Tacos album.
You're listening to XVGM Radio. All right, that lovely ditty was the theme of Laura from Silent Hill 2. That was a PS2 release in 2001, and that version was, of course, from Lame Genie. I like how you didn't change it too much, mm. but just enough to make it better, I guess. I, yeah. I, I really like the original track. I do too, yeah. But I I like the flourishes, and I, I say flourishes, but I'm, I'm really honestly... Referring to the Silent Hill siren at the end, yeah. I like when that when that came out. I was like, oh, re-, like I was just kind of blown away. I was yeah, like, do they really do that? That's awesome. I, yeah. I love. I, it, it's such, it's such a nice extra touch. It was a nice way to end the track. Yes, for what is honestly an improvement on Akira Yamaoka's original. Not to which take is away hard. From no, it. I was gonna say which is hard to do. Yeah, like, definitely. Like, we we heard the original. And I'm listening to it. And I'm like, yeah, this is really nice. Mm-hmm. What are they like? What are they gonna do? Yeah, like to I was wondering, song? like, how are they gonna do it? Yeah. I I would say that I think the beginning of the Akira Yamaoka version is a little stronger. Mm. It's a little louder too. Uh, whereas this version on Lame Genie's album is a little bit quieter and it's a little bit more somber. Which I don't know if that's what you guys were going for but that's kind of how it felt was um you kind of brought it in a little slower and then you kind of kicked it up a notch sure we always go through these weird like mental things with songs like this because it's it's so hard to cover a song from a game that's already a song you know yeah yeah (laughs) yeah yeah. like when you're when you're deconstructing like retro stuff for eight and 16 bits tracks it's like it's way easier because mm-hmm. it was never meant to be played as like a rock band. But yep. when you have a song that's already a rock song and you're trying to change it to make it another rock song, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah. mm-hmm. it's it's a really strange thing. And it's like, how do we switch this up so people wouldn't rather just go to the, listen to the original, you know? Yeah. 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 So it's not redundant. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's not like we're just doing a, sh- we, we never want to just do a straight cover. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because the original song is just so good. But I like the fact that you guys do honestly stay on the path of the original track for the most part. Like you don't, yeah. you keep it fresh, but you also keep it familiar. Yeah. So, yeah. and that's that's a tough balance because you know if you if you go too far off the tracks and you start you know making it sound totally different, uh, it could go either way. It could be good or it could be bad. So yeah, and then it's at that point it's like all right, we'll just write another song. You know? Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> right. So Silent Hill 2, is that, uh, who was the uh, big fan of that one? Who chose that one? Oh, that, yeah, that was me and Kyle. Okay. So did you guys I, play um, this originally, like, back in the day, like, when it came out, or did you play more Well, recently? no, I didn't. I actually, um, I didn't have a PlayStation growing up. I was a 64 kid, and, and uh, I had a Sega Saturn, too. Okay. Which is uh, a strange oh, thing. Yeah, but, that's um, pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, I actually found this game. I, was, I watched this uh, a show on YouTube called Video Games Awesome, and they... Yep. They pretty much sit on a couch and play games, you know, like, yeah, yeah. and you watch them play and it's live, whatever. It's like, it's kind of like how Twitch was, but yeah. before Twitch. Right, yeah, right. And yeah. uh, they have this Silent episode that was just, the Silent Hill 2 episode that was just so good. And I remember they were sitting on the intro screen for a while. Mm-hmm. And I just always remember, like, this song stuck with me so long. And I bought the remaster when it came out for PlayStation mm. 3, I want to yes. say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, love it. <laughs> yeah, I, lo- yeah, I let Jeff borrow it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just love the atmosphere because I'm just such a big horror movie guy. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I regret not playing the game back in the day because it didn't... Graphically, it aged okay, but the gameplay is just so early PlayStation where sure. you're just kind of like, where the hell do I go, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, definitely. I kind of wish I played it when I was a kid, but I mean, what can you do about that? So I was in college when this game came out, hmm. and I remember uh, the first time I played it was actually in 2000, I want to say like 2002, 2003. And I was living next door to a couple guys who were also, like, really into video games as well. So I lucked out because I had a roommate at the time (laughs) who I ended up living with who was a huge, you know, gamer like myself. And then Mm -hmm. our neighbor next door also was a gamer. And then we had a friend who lived, like, you know, in another dorm who was also a gamer. So we all kind of, like, hung out together. Yeah, uh, Yeah, wasn't that the best? I had the same exact situation as that. Yeah, we used, it, to, we used to uh, run land cables and play Unreal Tournament from room to room. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. This guy Chuck, who we, we live next door to, he got Silent Hill two, and so I was coming back from a date, and it was super late. It was like maybe like twelve or <laughs> one or something like that. And so I'm like, all right, well, my roommate's not in. Let me see if I hear like noise from Chuck's room. Let me see what he's doing. So I bang on the door. 
and he lets me in. He's like, oh, yeah, me and our buddy John were playing Silent Hill 2. Hmm. And I'm like, I've never heard of it. Let me sit down. Do you guys mind if I watch it with you? They're like, yeah, sure. So I was up till 5 in the morning <laughs> watching this game and just mesmerized, you know, watching other people play it. Like, yeah. I... I feel like Silent Hill is a better game for me to watch people play than for me to actually play. Like, I got more into it watching my friend struggle with, you know, <laughs> fighting, like, a pyramid. I agree and, with you 100%, because yeah. that's exactly how I felt when I saw it for the first time. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so, you know, let other people suffer through it. <laughs> yeah, right? The, the funniest part of that story, and I've told this on my YouTube channel before, but... Uh, and I, and I may have told this on my previous podcast. Mm. I, I don't remember, but I'm going to tell it anyways because it's a funny story. So, uh, you know, it's like five in the morning. I'm exhausted and I want to keep watching, but I'm also kind of terrified. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, well, I'm just, I'm going to go to bed. So I go in my room and take my pants off and <laughs> I'm looking around and I accidentally knock over one of my figures, my action figure. I had like a bunch of different action figures and one of them was uh, Jill Valentine from Resident Evil. Hmm. So, you know, I pick her up and I'm like, you know, sitting on the floor and like straightening her legs or whatever. <laughs> and my friend John, I didn't lock my door for whatever reason. My friend John busts in the room and he looks at me and I look at him and I'm holding the Jill doll <laughs> with, no pants. with no pants on. <laughs> And I just look up at him, and he's like, I don't know what to say. And he's like, caught you at your dolls again, didn't I? And I'm like, wait! And he just slams the door in my face. So, yeah. Hey, man, we've all been there. Yeah, yeah, right? I'm sure I once had a run-in with Jill Valentine at one point or the other. <laughs> oh, that Jill Valentine. Such a master you of You were unlocking. almost a Jill sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite part of Resident Evil, as far as, like, dialogue, like, one of the lines that nobody ever, like, finds hilarious that I always crack up at from the original is they're in the lobby, like, the hall with the main mm -hmm. area, and Jill comes back in the room or whatever, and Barry's talking to her, and he's, like, he's trying to explain to her that he's going to give the lockpick to her. Yeah. Lockpick, yeah. Yeah, the That's master of exactly. unlocking thing. Know. And right before it, he goes, and, uh... Jill, like the way he's pronounced Jill, it's it's almost as if he's like not sure if she's Jill, so it's like a question. <laughs> it's like a, he's a rookie. So he's it's like and walking. he's like and uh, Jill. <laughs> I don't know. I always found that really funny. Uh. So Akira Yamaoka did almost all the music for Silent Hill for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, Silent Hill one. He was the sound producer on. He worked on tons of different Beat Mania games. Actually, quick clarification corner on that. I just remembered that one of our friends on Twitter, at TF Darkenstar, gave me some information about what we've been saying versus what the truth is. We've been saying, every time we've been going through this, uh, things like Beat Mania, IIDX. Oh, and stuff yeah. Like that. It's actually, uh, apparently, Beat Mania 2DX. Okay, yeah, that's right, yeah. So, instant clarification corner. Yeah. So, uh, started off with Smartball in 91 as an assistant composer. Worked on the Sparkster game in 94. I believe that's the Super NES and the uh, Genesis version, which I think were two slightly different games. Snatcher in 94, he did sound design on. Vandal Hearts in 96, we're going to jump way ahead. Already mentioned the Silent Hill series, which he's pretty much done almost every game. Uh, if you want to hear a little bit more about Akira Yamaoka, we talked about him quite a bit during the survival, survival horror, horror with Avalanche, Avalanche Jared. Jared. Yep, yep. And then his final game, which he composed for, was Dead Realm in 2017. So that is it for Akira Yamaoka. So let's get into our final track of the podcast, and then we'll have a little bit of... Uh, well, I have a specific story that I want to tell about oh, Lame Genie. yes, yes. And about a very particular album that they have. <laughs> so this is The Messenger. This came out on the Switch and Windows in 2018. This track is Glacial Peak. It's also called Frozen Light, and this is composed by Rainbow Dragon Eyes. And we're going to listen to that version right now.
that little ditty was from a game called The Messenger, and the soundtrack was by Rainbow Dragon Eyes. The track is The Frozen Light, Glacial Peak, and now we're going to listen to Lame Genie's cover, which is off of their album Play Games, Eat Tacos. Welcome back to our final track of the episode. That was The Messenger, which came out on the Switch and Windows in 2018. The track was The Frozen Light, also known as Glacial Peak. And that was composed by Rainbow Dragon Eyes. And the Lame Genie version was off of the album Play Games, Eat Tacos. Well, the working title for the album was Albums Are a Complete Waste of Time. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. That is also awesome, yes. (laughs) So, why The Messenger? I know that this game just came out. Was it one of those things where you did kind of try to chase the dragon as far as YouTube trying to get the latest track up? Well, the thing about that game is it came out of nowhere. Mm. It just, like, kind of came out one day. I really wasn't expecting it. And then um, I was watching someone play it on YouTube, and I was like, holy crap, this game looks amazing. Yeah. So I I played through the whole thing, like, very quickly. Because the soundtrack is just... You don't really hear a lot of soundtracks that are, like, pure... 8 and 16 bit anymore. Yeah, that's true. They, like, they, they, cause, because a lot of those soundtracks that come out use way more of the sound palette than a lot of those older systems would even allow. Right, right. This one was still kind of true to that old, old sound, and it really, like, I was like, oh, this is a perfect game because we love covering those older tracks because mm-hmm. they're, like I said before, it's, like, easier to cover a song that's not a rock song, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we were just looking through tracks to cover for this, and it was just... Yeah, I mean, covering new games is fun. Yeah. Now, do you look up tabs for the actual songs and, like, learn them that way, or do you just go based on, like, the ear, using your ear to listen to the parts of the track? We just learn it by ear. Oh, do you? Oh, okay. That's yeah. that's really amazing. That's really impressive that you guys can do that in, like, one night, that you just sit down and you're like, all right, let's just learn a song and then play it. Like... <laughs> Honestly, if we were to look up tabs for it, 99% chance I'd be learning the song incorrectly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the ear like, is the best. Who do you want to trust? Jeff McGowan or uh, this kid David, this nine-year-old David in his bedroom? <laughs> right tabs on, yeah. Hey, hey. Marfan David. 69 at AOL.com. Listen, Dave worked his butt off for those songs, all right, to tab those. He tries his best. He tries his best, people. <laughs> Old Barfy. <laughs> so, actually, my former podcast host on Pixel Tunes Radio, Ed Wilson, recorded an episode with Rainbow Dragon Eyes. 
So definitely anybody who's interested in hearing more about the composition of Rainbow Dragon Eyes, how he composed the track, go listen to that. That's on the VG Embassy. So The Messenger, I've not played this one. I haven't really heard that much of the soundtrack, to be honest, but everything I have heard, I've been really impressed with. It's a pretty cool soundtrack, and the game itself, I think, really is a spiritual successor or tribute in a lot of ways to Ninja Gaiden. Hmm. Sure. Yeah. But this one goes between 8 and 16-bit, right? It does. Yeah, yeah. And that's pretty neat. That's a that's a different take. I, I The only yeah. game I know of that does that otherwise is, like, Adventures of Pep. <laughs> I mean, you could argue Evoland 1 and 2, but, I mean, yeah. that literally evolves from, like, Game Boy... Mm. Th- uh, up through you know mod- modern era, mm. but yeah, I mean it, it's the, the music from this game is is also really really awesome too. When you mm. listen to like the eight bit version and the sixteen bit version, yeah, yeah. Um, and the way that they sort of like the graphics evolve like that and mm-hmm. the music evolves like that, yeah, which that's is, awesome. I think one of the things that makes this game so mm. like it, like like they said, it came out of nowhere yeah. and it was just like. Whoosh. Who, who, who do you think yeah. you are making a game like this? <laughs> it just came off to me as, like, really smart, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know that the original composer of Ninja Gaiden, who I believe is Keiji Yamagishi, actually said that they, like, interviewed him about this game. Hmm. And I think he actually I think did. I saw that video. Yeah, he, like, uh, yeah. sat down and, like, watched them, like, play the game or, or whatever. Watched somebody play the game. Or, hmm. like, they played the game. I can't remember who it was. But it was him hmm. and, I think one of the producers of the original Ninja Gaiden. Oh, wow. And they sat down, they played through the game, and they or played a little bit of the game, and they were just like, oh, you know, like kind of sharing little tidbits here and there about, like, uh, Underwater, for example. Hmm. Like, they said that they originally were going to have Ryu go underwater in the game, but I guess, like, it was too much of a challenge or something like that. Mm. They weren't able to do it, or they weren't able to pull it off fast enough, so it just didn't flow right, so they, they took it out of the game. But how crazy would have that been if they had, like, underwater scenes in Ninja Gaiden. <laughs> no, I, I can't even imagine how hard that level would be. Yeah, I know, right? It'd be, like, worse than the uh, the dam level in Ninja Turtles. So, yeah, I believe that Rainbow Dragon Eyes only did this game as far as, like, official soundtracks go, but I'm not entirely sure. I can't... I, we're looking through his band camp, and we're not really seeing anything specific. Looks like maybe Plunder or Perish is another game that I think he worked on. Mm-hmm. That's about it. So, real quick, why did you guys pick Lame Genie for your name of your band. So obviously it's a parody of Game Genie. You're not a parody band, but like you guys are goofballs. So it's like (laughs) one of those things where like, was it the sort of thing where you looked at the name of Game Genie and you were like, oh, got it, Lame Genie. Like, was it instantaneous or did you like really like, what were some of the other names you were going through? Well, you just kind of set it in that whole spiel right there. (laughs) Way to steal the thunder, yeah. Mike. Sorry. We think we put about one minute of thought into it. <laughs> it was instantaneous. We Kyle just said lame genie. I don't think you said it. it was in like a oh, little I, I typed it to you. You're like, hey, what do you want to call the band? I was like, I don't know, lame genie, because we're stupid. And he was like, yeah, we're right. <laughs> yeah. No and, arguments. It was. <laughs> and here we are. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. So I feel like in, in like retrospect, without even thinking about it, like back in the day, yeah. I feel like it, it encapsulates the band very, very well. Yeah, no, I agree. But you know, it's because it's just like all our albums are just stupid. And if and if you see us live, our whole performance and and the guy talking between songs is just stupid. You know what I mean? Everything yeah, that yeah. we do is just kind of. Well, on that cusp of being like, are these guys serious? You know, <laughs> the only thing I had to fight for was calling that one album moist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and honestly, before talking to you guys, I never realized how stupid our band is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, yeah right. thank you. <laughs> Happy to like, help, I, I guess. I to explain to people, uh, when you see us live, it's like, partially comedy and you know and partially music and yeah. it's like that's the best way to be oh absolutely if, if yeah tell too seriously and you're doing video game covers it's like it's awkward what are you really doing you know? yeah yeah <laughs> no you should be having fun and this is your way of having fun so i, I really think sure. it fits your personalities as people too so like you know after talking to you guys for a couple hours we can tell that you guys are totally just all about having fun <laughs> and just goofing around and, yeah. and that's that's really all it is so that's all you can do. I mean, it's mostly what we do on this show too. Like if this yeah. were if this were a serious interview, I'd I'd be I'd be passed out right now. That's true. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> this band would have ended a long time ago if we were serious, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I got to talk about Royal Pander, who I, I, I th- this is your April Fool's 2017 album. Here's my story about this. So as I was going through your band camp and I was listening, I was just driving around, like listening to the music. I first listened to Retro Pander. And as soon as I saw Killer Instinct, which is one of my favorite like game soundtracks, I saw the Killer Instinct theme song and I was like, oh man, I love this song. And I've heard other groups cover it before, mm-hmm. like uh, On Being Human, for example, they did a great cover of it. And I was like, how are Lame Genie going to top it? And they (laughs) they did a phenomenal job. Like, this is one of my favorite versions of the Killer Instinct, like, main, like, intro theme song. So I first heard Retro Pander. I heard the Killer Instinct theme song. And I thought, this is great. This is awesome. But let me check out this April Fool's album that I saw right before. So I didn't listen to any other tracks on Retro Pander initially. I just saw Killer Instinct, listened (laughs) to it, and then immediately went to Royal Pander. Royal yes. and Royal Pander looks very similar to Retro Pander as far as the album cover goes. It's a little bit different. It's a little <laughs> goofier. <laughs> Royal Pander <laughs> is an album that all the song titles are Chinese food like takeout menu names. Like it's actually uh, from the Royal Panda menu. Oh, really? okay. Oh, so that makes a lot of sense. Huh. Okay. So like uh, for example, Lung Fong Wedding, Crab Puff Six Pieces, <laughs> uh, Create Your Own Sauce, Peking Duck. <laughs> That's not the name. I don't really remember that. Uh, <laughs> my, my favorite Michael Jackson combination play. Yeah, yeah, that one's good. And that one kind of gives it away a little bit. Yeah. I'm a big fan of honey coated chicken or shrimp wal- with walnuts. <laughs> 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 because of the or, like that that makes it entirely funny. Hearing someone else read this is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Fried bean curd with vegetables, dry sauteed string bean. Sizzling Filet Mignon. So, like, these are the name of the tracks. And what you're essentially doing, and I encourage all of you to go out and listen to this in your car. Like, drive around and listen to this album. Like, download it. It's free. You can download their album off their band camp. And if you go into it knowing that you just listened to the Killer Instinct song like I did, then you click this and listen to every song, you're going to be entirely confused and laughing your butts off. Like... Oh, man. So I, I did that. I was driving around, listened to the Killer Instinct theme song, jumped to Royal Pander, <laughs> and then I start playing, like, random tracks in Royal Pander. And what they did was they took the Killer Instinct theme song, spread it out over 11 tracks, so just repeated it every single track. And then what they did was they took vocals from popular music and popular songs. I don't know. I guess we can give... Got to explain it, so we got to give some away. My favorite is Celine Dion. Uh, Titanic theme. Yeah, it's the yeah, Titanic yeah. theme. That's all, you know? Wherever you are. My heart will go on. Where far, wherever you yeah, are. my heart will go on. There that's the go. name of it. So they took the vocals to that where Celine Dion is singing and they put it in the in the background. They synced it up perfectly with the Killer Instinct theme song. And uh, that's just one of the tracks. Uh, there's others like Smash Mouth, for example. There's uh, <laughs> Rammstein. Like, they picked like a bunch of random like 90s and... Uh, 2000s songs that were super popular and uh, are kind of like meme worthy and they put the vocals to the Killer Instinct theme song and it fits so freaking well it's unbelievable disturbingly well disturbingly well like the way you guys sync this up like what was going through your mind with this I gotta I gotta wonder it was really funny early on because we basically we had the had to tune the songs together so it would actually be in tune. Yeah, we had to figure the key of the original song out first and then pitch Killer Instinct down or up depending on it. Oh, uh, okay. Up. But it was funny because we tried pitching the vocals first and we just realized that it wasn't going to happen that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So That's... it sounds really, really deep sometimes with the music. Like it's detuned <clears throat> so low it's ridiculous. I don't even yeah. remember how this, this came to be. I think... I think when we were covering the Killer Instinct song, it's just like a new metal y, you know what I mean? It yeah, just yeah. Like that, that feel to it. And we're yeah. like, dude, wouldn't it be funny if, if like you put this, like, I forget what the first song we did it was Smash Mouth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because the Smash Mouth meme was huge at that time. Yeah, the All Star, yeah, yeah. And we're like, oh, we should just put All Star over this. <laughs> and then and we found the vocal for that, and I was like, oh, I wonder if I can find this vocal. And we started finding all these isolated vocal tracks. Yeah. 
And I was like, all right, this is stupid enough to be another <laughs> album, you know, so. I hope that if you do create another April Fool's Day album, which I am crossing my fingers that you do, you not only call it 2018 and release it in 2019, <laughs> but you also <laughs> continue the legacy of doing the Killer Instinct theme song with with new li- vocals, <laughs> I, I think that you could really uh, kill it with maybe like some Katy Perry or like some, uh, yeah, you know, some something. Rebecca Black, Re- Rebecca Black. Oh my God, Friday, Carly Rae Jepsen. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Call me maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're all four four timing, so it'd yeah. be super easy to do. So, yeah, one can only hope. There needs to be a Patreon tier for that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny. I, I feel like out of all of our albums, that's the one that people have heard the least. <laughs> and really? that's the one I would hope that people would hear the most, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard it here, listeners. Go listen to Royal <laughs> Pander. To Royal Panda. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So, yeah, we want to thank you guys so much for being on the show. We had a blast. Oh, my God. At the end of every episode, we like to pick our favorite tracks, and we invite you guys to do that as well. So, you know, we can talk about the Lame Genie picks as well as the originals, uh, even if they're different. So, Justin, what what do you say to to your favorite? Uh, I'm going to go with Lame Genie's cover of Chill Penguin. Okay. Because that one was just, it was just really good. Like, yeah. I, I I enjoy Meg- the Mega Man series and the Mega Man X series even more. Sure. And Chill Penguin is probably one of my favorite Mavericks. Mm. Uh, I mean, there there's a lot of really good ones out there, but I just, I like Chill Penguin. There's it's something, the first one you hear other yeah. than the intro track. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there, there's some, something cute about his mm. uh, homicidal tendencies. <laughs> <laughs> Serving you Baja Blast. Yeah, yes. And watermelon diabetes. So, <laughs> uh, now is that your pick for the original as well, or what? what do you oh, think I didn't know we were doing uh, one of each. Uh, as far as the original tracks go, I really liked the the Frozen Light, the Glacial Peak track from okay. uh, from the Messenger. Yeah, I like that too. Um, yeah. That that was a really cool track. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with that one as well for my originals. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like that Messenger track. Again, I hadn't heard the soundtrack, so it was uh, really cool. For the Lame Genie pick, ooh, that's tough. Um, I. Th- I think I'm going to go with the Mario Kart 64 track because I feel like it's a overall improvement to the oh, original. Yeah. Like I think that it's it far surpasses the original. It's sped up, it's it's better, mm-hmm. like it, it's just more my taste. Overall that Mega Man 3 medley that we played in the beginning though was just phenomenal. Yes. Great stuff. <laughs> and I encourage everybody to go out and listen to their other other medleys cuz they're all really phenomenal. So what about you guys? What are your favorite tracks of this uh, podcast? It's tough to say because I kind of look at everything from a production standpoint, like because we spend so much time with the songs and like I hear them and I'm like, oh, I think this one sounds the best. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So like out of our own tracks, I don't, I don't really think I could pick one. I, I really do like the way Mega Man Three medley sounds. <laughs> yeah. I think as far as an original goes, that Silent Hill song is just, it's just so good to me. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Mm. Awesome. Uh, so where can everyone find you guys? We have a uh, Facebook at Lame Genie Band. We couldn't get Lame Genie because it was taken before. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah, some, wow, some, guy, some guy who hates us, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have uh, Instagram at Lame Genie VGM, I think. Okay. And, uh, it's Lame Genie. It's just Lame Genie. And then uh, YouTube.com uh, slash Lame Genie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. So, and then your right. band camp is lamegenie.bandcamp.com. Mm-hmm. That's where you can go to pretty much access all this. You can access their music, their merch, their YouTube, their Facebook, their Instagram, and their Twitter. Oh, also, as of today, too, we, we just recently got on Spotify. Yes, so awesome. You can find us on there, too. Nice. Perfect, perfect, yeah. That's really cool. All right, so before we close out for the show we just want to thank all of our patreons for all, all of the the fun things that we're, we're doing here between our equipment uh without you guys we wouldn't have been able to do the stickers that we that we gave away yeah. last month um so our patrons are alex messenger scott McElhone, cam worma chris murray kung fu carlito of the heroes 3 podcast Chris Myers, Peter Panda, The Autistic Gamer 89, and Mix Master. Yes, thank you so much for sponsoring our show. We really appreciate it. You can also check us out at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash XVGM radio. That's the hot spot to go to talk about our show. It's also where you can talk about video games and video game music. It doesn't necessarily have to be our show. You can talk about anything. You could talk about cheese if you wanted to. <laughs> if you really want to, but you better bring it back to VGM at some point. (laughs) 
Check us out on Twitter and Instagram. Our handles on both are at XVGM Radio. Please follow us. And also check us out on iTunes as well and all your other podcatchers that you may listen to. Yeah. Our next episode that we're going to be doing is episode 22. And we are doing a single game cover where we are going to be playing some of the music from Dolphin Blue. This is an Atomus Wave Metal Slug clone. Really fun game, amazing stuff, and pretty interesting soundtrack. I think people will dig it. Yes, yes. It's going to be a lot of fun, as as they tend to be. Yeah. So again, thank you so much, Lame Genie, for joining us on XVGM Radio. We really appreciate it. Thank Thank you. you. We're going to leave you with an outro track, and it is the Killer Instinct theme song by Lame Genie. So you can check that out. And again, definitely check out that Royal Panda album if you like this version, (laughs) because I think you'll have a blast (laughs) listening to it. Yes. Again, this is Mike. And Justin. Signing off for XVGM Radio. We'll see you in two weeks. talked about many times on this podcast <laughs> specifically on our disney capcom episode and our beat-em-ups episode they did gargoyles twist yeah they did gargoyles tw- i keep saying twist gargoyles twist you guys <laughs> ever play gargoyles twist it's my favorite dude it's a yeah. good game gargoyles twist oh my god really <laughs> i just did it again you're fired yeah that's it <laughs> you've got like a panda bear who's not really a panda wear. It looks like he's wearing a ski mask and like a a, a crown, and it looks like he's holding a gun. Hey, no, they, no, they inverted royal. the colors, dude. It's royal, dude. Uh, it is inverted. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's it's 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 the panda. Yeah, holding no, the controller. you're right. But he's wearing it. He was wearing a crown. Yeah, yeah. They, so they, added, they added the, the crown. They added the crown. So just just go go with gun. <laughs> go That's really <laughs>